Hello, Namaskar, and welcome to this exciting episode of Satology Debunking Mythology. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining and uh, showing uh, your support. Uh, today I'm going to discuss something very important and uh, and which will be very instructive for many people to be joined correct Sun Tzu's art of war and what is the history uh, this is a famous book hai. I'll speak both in English and Hindi so both of you can understand uh, Marathi Hindi and English I'm comfortable in these three languages and to some extent Punjabi but uh, the so Sun Tzu's Art of War, very famous book. And I'm going to show you excerpts, which will be very surprised. And I wrote a book called Narada, The Making of a Statesman. And you can check out my book on Amazon. It's not yet published in India. India it may come from different publishers. Already two books have come in India from Kapoth Publications. So if I share my screen, it's going to be very, very interactive session. Please join and listen like it is. It is going to be very instructive today. Uh, so these are the books available I have from Amazon. You can see them on the screen and uh, you can see these are different books available. Uh, there are around nine titles and uh, different variations. So it makes up around 18 books total in different editions like Kindle is separate and hard print is separate and uh, also the, uh, the the paperback is available. So I'm going to cover comparing this book of mine and Sun Tzu's Art of War. What is Sun Tzu's Art of War? Very, very, you know, topic which is being spoken everywhere, spoken everywhere and discussed everywhere you can you can see that it is like covered in many details in many 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 talks is been quoted like randomly everywhere so let before we start off on the sun tzu's art of war sun tzu's mostly sun tzu is a fictional character sun means zhu sanskrit word is shu and and wu sun tzu is a uh, and is a warrior Sun Tzu. It's a fictional name. It's a name attributed to many other, many, many different scholars. Uh, people say that he actually lived by 500 BC. But given by the commonality of this name, so these teachings were acquired by the Buddhist pilgrims to India. So you, you'll see, see, see China ka jo dharm hai, religion hai, wo dham se connected hai. China's culture is intrinsically connected to India. And so many travelers come, had come to India and to take this knowledge from India to China. And this has happened to Huen Sang and many other scholars, Chinese scholars, have publicly attributed the knowledge from coming from India to China. And it has been a tradition in China. And most of the traditional Chinese have a great respect for India as a home of knowledge. Traditional, I'm talking scholars. Uh, other scholars which are influenced by the Communist Party of China do not accept it. Now, suddenly in 21st century, 18th century, 19th century, how did how did the Chinese Sun Tzu's art of war became very famous? You know, you will be surprised that the art of war became famous during 1948. Or uh, 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 1948 or 1940, uh, 1947. In this period, these texts were translated extensively by the European scholars. Just Bharat ke saath bhi aisa hua. Bharat ka 18, late in 1800s mein Max Muller or just the European scholars said to understand India, they started converting Vedic scriptures or Shastra into English language or to make the Europeans understand it. And, uh, and it has become very common that to take wherever these European colonizers went, they translate the books from there to bring it back to Europe. And like this, they did for China, they did for India, they did for Southeast Asia, wherever they went. So not only they, they 
stole the wealth, but they also stole the knowledge books of that area so that they can understand them better. If they understand them better, and these are all done by the churches, and then convert them, convert them for their faith and their language. And when they collected all this information, the European Renaissance began in the 17th century or 16th century. Mostly 15th, 16th, 17th centuries are where the European Renaissance happened. And if you look at the, because China, India, these are all part of the same land. And in my earlier video show, I have already shown, and in my book, if you read the uh, my book, the, the Pandavas, which is also available on Amazon, both in print as well as uh, this one is available and Kindle as well. So Kindle book, uh, you can see in many places, even in India and other places. And in this book, I have highlighted how China actually paid taxes to Hastinapur, Chin. The word Chin is there and they used to get kar. Uh, the Hastinapur used to extract kar. And that is mentioned in Mahabharata. So it's not that I am saying it. There is a shloka is there. I can quote that shloka. It's in my book also. You can see, check it out. Where it mentions Chin as a uh, sub-territory. So, so when Chinese start redrawing maps, my fun is, my question to them is, hey, if you go back just 1959, let me let us take you back to Mahabharata times. And if you take Mahabharata times and you are paying taxes, you are one of the, uh, the you were like, see, Mahabharata, there was not a federal structure. Federal structure is also centralized because there is a central body and there are states. Like in, in the Mahabharata times, when the, the Pandavas or the Hastinapur kings used to conquer any land, they used to install the local people as a king. That is a wise strategy. They were not. They were not trying to. They were not interested in uh, controlling micro, then micromanaging that land. Just say, "Aaj hota hai." Today is micromanagement. Like if uh, London wants to micromanage something in India, or New York wants to micromanage something in India, or London may want to micromanage even USA. That was not the culture in Mahabharata. Even if you look at the Ramayana, also, Bhagwan Ram conquered Lanka. So now. Technically, you can call Lanka as Ayodhya now. But he did not do that. He, in fact, br broke the bridge also and uh, and let uh, and let Lanka be independent and gave it to B Vibhishan. And, and even though Vibhishan wanted him to stay longer and visit longer, but he did not do that. He, he gave all the authority to Vibhishan and let Vibhishan manage it. So this is the culture in Mahabharata era and in Vedic culture that we... Even though, so there is a purpose behind conquest. Okay. So I'll jump into straight into the Sun Tzu's Art of War. I got a copy from uh, University of Toledo's. It's a free copy available, PDF. It was very difficult for me to find out a book, a Sun Tzu's Art of War, to actually compare. And believe me, I'm doing it for the first time. I don't read, I've never read Sun Tzu's Art of War. But for the sake of this presentation, today's video, I actually read it. And, uh, and try to go deep into it, try to understand. Hmm? So, you guys are very interact with your questions, and keep on writing your questions here. What I'm going to do is, towards the end of the show, towards the end of 10-15 minutes, I'm going to take everybody's question. So, whatever I'm speaking, keep writing it, or if you want to, to remember it, you put it, can put it on the chat also. Okay? So, and... I put a disclaimer also, it's an academic analysis because I'm a writer as an author and I'm just doing academic analysis for comparing whether Sun Tzu's Art of War is relevant today and who can use it. So people like in the West, it's a, uh, you know, we all know that the most of the Western bodies and Western education institutions are ideologically bankrupt. It's a very strong statement for me to make. But I can say for surety, because there is no wisdom, like there is no how, why, and in what situations we use that knowledge. It's not there. That is there only in the Vedic parampara or the, the parampara in the traditions of the Vedic culture. The many sampradaya, and I 
I must tell you, if any of you follow Sampradaya, you are very glorious. Any Sampradaya. At least you have faith in the Guru Parampara. You are very glorious and you are doing a wonderful work. Keep your faith. Whatever your Guru tells you, do that. Now, it has to be Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. It should not go outside the boundaries of the Vedic culture. But if you are just following it, you are doing a wonderful work. So let me begin now. And we'll compare page by page. Okay. So what what uh, there is a before the Ratsu Yagya and uh, and Narad Muni inspires and that yes, uh, Yudhishthir should perform the Ratsu Yagya, Pandu Maharaj, and then Narad Muni tests Yudhishthir, you know, or uh, uh, tests Yudhishthir and then he asks him 113 questions. It's a very small two page in Mahabharata. And uh, two or uh, probably around eight pages, eight or nine pages in Mahabharata. But in my book, The Making of a Statesman, I expanded it to make it relevant for today's conquest and, and primarily to educate that Sun Tzu's Art of War is not a complete exercise, it's not a complete book. See, Koi bhi Sabeta hai, I'll speak in Hindi a little bit. Koi bhi Sabeta hai, wo sirf yudh pe nahi chal sakti. युद्ध पे तो लोग बैंक्रप्ट होते हैं जैसे वर्ल्ड वॉर टू और वर्ल्ड वॉर वन की वजह से यूके बिकेम सो पुअर दैट दे हैड टू गिव अप बिग बिग टेरिटरीज इंक्लूडिंग इंडिया दैट वाज द मेन रीजन सेकेंडरी रीजन वाज दैट इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी लेड बाय सुभाष चंद्र बोस आल्सो ट्रबल दैम दे टुक एडवांटेज ऑफ द सिचुएशन वेरी इंटेलिजेंट वर्क बाय सुभाष चंद्र बोस कि व्हेन यूके वाज वीक then they took advantage. That's how it should be done. But koi bhi sabhita, no civilization can run only on war. So, and war fighting skills are based on tactical and strategic. Strategic long term is economical progress and the quality of they say, samaj ko ek rakhna, ek jod ke rakhna, unity rakhna. That is a strategic victory. Log strategic victory bolte hain shayad ki nuclear weapons aur ye sab aaj kal nyan nyan a gaya. But that is not strategic victory. Strategic victory is education, parampara, traditions, music. Music is very important part of strategy. Uh, culture, itihas and also the disinformation campaigns. Removing them from the society. You know, aisa nahi hai. किस सिर्फ आज ही ट्रेड कॉन्फ्रेंसेस की जरूरत थी पहले नहीं थी रामायण महाभारत काल में नहीं थी वहां पे बिजनेस नहीं होता था जी जहां भी बिजनेस होता है वहां पे ट्रेड कॉन्फ्रेंस की जरूरत होती है जैसे कोई आज का अगर इतिहास लिखेगा ये समरी राइट्स टुडेस हिस्ट्री ऑब्वियसली दे आर गोइंग टू अवॉइड दे आर जस्ट गोइंग टू मेंशन पासिंग फ्रेजेस दैट यस देयर वाज अ ट्रेड कॉन्फ्रेंस हैपेंड इन इंडिया देयर इज अ ट्रेड कॉन्फ्रेंस प्लेस और in the West, like I live in San Diego, there are many trade conferences happen here in San Diego Convention Center. Chicago has a convention center. New York has a convention center. Many places have convention centers. And it is very common. So if somebody is writing today's history, they're not going to write exactly the name of the place and the place where the convention center, where the trade is happening. They're just going to do a passing remark in the history. Exactly they did in Mahabharata also. Because when they when 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 something gets mentioned in Mahabharat, understand one thing: the the extent of its implementation will be huge. Because Mahabharat is a history of the of the world from the beginning of creation. It's not just Mahabharat war. So, if there is a reference, it will be the reference of the entire Dwapar Yuga, and Treta Yuga, and Sat Yuga. And so, so that. Simple one line can mean many things in that, but that is not the focus. See, the focus of Mahabharat is to glorify Poon Purushottam Bhagwan Shri Krishna. That's the focus. And while doing so, they have to describe the geography, the history, the kings, and the character of Pandava, and that's how it is done. So Mahabharat has many elements. So there is two books. I've I've, I've published three books on Mahabharat. One is Pandavas, the making of the famous five, Narada, the making of a statesman, 
and the third one is Yudhishthir, the greatest, Samrat Yudhishthir, the greatest emperor. Now, in these three books, two of them are available from Kapoth in India. You can check it out. In three of these books, so I'm going to cover this topic, second part also, Kanik instruction also, but not in today's session. Today, I'm going to just focus on Narada and Sun Tzu. And then why I feel that Sun Tzu's Art of War is a negative compilation. Means it is exploitative. See, war pe koi dunya nahi chalti. You cannot run a society on just wars. Any society which has focused only on wars has collapsed. But war is essential for peace. A threat of war, a capability buildup is essential for peace. You know. So first we'll pick up. And now I'm going to pick up the Sun Tzu's out of war specific words. Okay, You'll be surprised to see what I'm going to show you right now. And it's just purely for educational purposes. It's not no commercial purpose, nothing. It's just purely educational. And if you can see my screen, can you see my screen? You can keep replying to me because I do not hear you. I can see your chats, but I cannot hear you. So if you look at this, which I'm just sharing, and I'll try to see if I can expand it because it's difficult to see here. Uh, if I can make it a little bigger. If you, can you see that on your screens? Uh, yes, you can see that. Now, look at that. If he is secure at all points, please be prepared for him. If he's in a superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is of chloric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, he may go arrogant. Yeah. There's some of the things. Hold out baits to entice the enemy, feign disorder and crush him. Very weak. It's like a very weak, like he, as if he's talking to a very weak king. He's not talking to a Yudhishthir. He's not talking to like a strong Raja, like an emperor. He's talking to someone like a tribal king, which is, uh, which is, I mean, if people think they're tribal, then they can learn from this. Because he's talking to a person who is about to be defeated. You can see his mindset. And when able to attack, one must, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When, when we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. No way this will do a strong army will do, like Yudhishthir Maharaj or Pandava. This is for guerrilla warfare. This is used only for a small tribal army. So that means this is being taught to rivals, like a small, small kings fighting over the small lands. You cannot make this as a strategy for a civilized world. Not possible. Sometimes you may feel China is doing this exactly. But China is not following it also. China is trying to show off. At the borders, they come up with a huge force and they show off, you know, the and they try to uh, to scare you. Anyone who is there who is trying to believe them, they're getting scared. You know? And uh, and they seek to irritate him. If the Because our in the yoga, in the Raja, it's like said that if somebody is weak, do not exploit him. The point is, but if somebody is weak, try to educate him so that he comes out of this irritation. There's a different one. If he's taking his ease, give him no rest. Like these are the type. Of, like it doesn't seem to be the instruction for a for a king. These are seem to be instruction for small warlords, like a, which have no idea of dharma, which cannot bring society peaceful. In fact, China was not peaceful, and that's why it was conquered by the Europeans for opium trade. It was because they were kept fighting, just like anyone else. Like India, we kept on fighting. But still, most of the Indian Raja had dharma on the side. They were trying to prepare something bigger. So this person, Sun Tzu, whosoever he is, because I do not know his identity, I spent many, many hours searching his identity. I and mean, I've been doing it since 2019, not today. It's three years I've been searching his identity, but it's not. So I came to a conclusion that he's someone like Juan Diego. Juan Diego is a fictional character created by Vatican and sent like uh, we, we also have John Doe. John Doe is a fictional name. If, if you said Atma Baro, uh, we call it Ram Barose, is a fictional name. Like if you don't know anybody's name, you say Ram Barose 
एंड दैट्स हाउ द प्लेज आर मेड नाटक बनाते हैं ये राम भरोसे व्यक्ति है तो ऐसे करता है ऐसा होता है ना सो आई डोंट सी वेदर ही इज इज रियल दिस इज लाइक इंस्ट्रक्शन मस्ट नॉट बी डाइवर्ज बिफोर हैंड एंड नाउ द जनरल विंस अबाउट द मेक्स कैलकुलेशन इज टेंपल आर द बैटल ही इज फॉर सो इट इज अगेन इट इज गोइंग स्मॉल वॉर लॉर्ड्स फाइटिंग फॉर स्मॉल इन्फ्लुएंस ओके नो मोर नो 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 बिग नो बिग प्लान्स नो बिग स्ट्रेटजी महाभारत वॉर इज एग्जैक्टली अपोजिट ऑफ दिस महाभारत वॉर वॉज सिविलियंस शुड नॉट बी हर्ट एंड वी विल फाइट फेस टू फेस एंड वी विल फाइट इन द ओपन बट नाउ दैट इज वॉट यू हैव सीन इन द नारद इंस्ट्रक्शन टू यूजिस्टर सो दिन वेन नारद इज टॉकिंग नारद इज द Unfortunately, in India, people make fun of Narad Muni. People joke about Narad Muni. People make him like a comic character. उनके ऊपर आपके Bollywood media cartoon characters बनाता है. उनको मजाक की तरह दिखाते हैं. Which is very sad. Very very sad. Because Narad Muni is the guru of everybody. Brahma, this Brahma's son. Just imagine what position he has. He is the guru of Vyasa Dev. he tells vyasadev when vyasadev has a problem after writing all the vedic uh, literatures and vedic uh, so you sort of use a literature sabhi vedic shastron ko after he compiled them then and puran upanishad everything was written down mahabharat was completed then he he was not still satisfied still not satisfied in his heart so then he approached narad muni that is the narad muni approach narad muni that why i am not satisfied what has happened to me why after doing so much i am not satisfied then narad muni tells him you have not described fully to your heart's content the this basis of this world which is narayan and that's when shrimad bhagavat purana was written and his own son shukdev goswami spoke it first in namisharanya and it is way after the mahabharat war had ended already So now let me come back to the topic actually, and you will be really surprised. Uh, so I'm going to share my book. When you buy Narad Muni, the uh, when you buy the Narad, uh, uh, see just a minute. I'm going to. Uh, Just a minute. I think it's not sharing. No. Okay, let it be. Maybe sometime, other time, I'll share it. But let me see if I can open it somewhere. uh so anyway in this book uh of mine let me see if i can open that here so just to give you an idea It, I tested it, but somehow it is not showing up. But give me a second. It's a live show, so I cannot. I did that before. come back to it uh let me see if i can find that my copy of my book from another place uh oh, no another 
give me a prashna. Maybe I have to. I cannot see that, but uh, let me. Okay, if you can see my screen here, uh, let me just do that. Share screen. One tab. Okay. Anyway, I will just see if I can do the preview of this one. Preview. Maybe we can do the preview just to get see show you the 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 book in the uh, preview section. Maybe you can see that. Okay. Anyway, this won't work because I'm just doing that. Let me uh, so let me just read the chapters. I'm unfortunately I cannot show you because of technical issues. Whatever I was prepared to show you, but I'll show you. So in the number fifty-one, so Sun Tzu we already discussed, and uh, in the number fifty-one, if you read my book on page one sixty-five. Of my book, Nara, the making of a statesman. So it's uh, 49. It's called Seven Solutions. So when Nara is talking about solutions, now Sun Tzu is when Sun Tzu is talking about it. Sun Tzu is talking about how to defeat the another army. Looks like a very small tactical group. Uh, keep your army short. Surprise! Surprise is the biggest element. Okay. But that is very commonsensical. It's not something big. Like if you if you leave a untrained man outside to fight, he's definitely going to select a very simple, uh, best way to protect himself. It's not something big. So very like a very commonsensical approaches be, appear to be small. Deception is the main thing. Do not show yourself as big. And just be small surprise element, you know. But that's not the way the civilization works. Narad Muni emphasizes, on the other hand, the purpose of defending a rashtra. The rashtra concept is there in Mahabharat, is to actually follow the dharma. Dharma doesn't mean religion. Dharma means any actions or state policies which bring benefit. to the highest group of people with the objective of promoting values like for example cow killing cow is a very useful animal and cow killing is considered to be a great karmically bad activity so if you anyone kills cow then that nation will be destroyed one day whether sooner or later is going to be destroyed so to protect away to make keep people away from such sinful activities dharma is a common principle in the vedic culture where surya upasana that these are the rituals in the morning afternoon evening maintaining sandhya maintaining temples and and dharmic society is the biggest charitable society unfortunately because of enforced poverty on india by the colonizers like including islamic colonizers as well as british colonizers both are the same thing looters Jahangir used to give away most of the wealth of India to the Dutch East India Company. He was looting India left, right, and center from Bengal, and uh, and uh, Jahangir used to rule in Delhi, but uh, all the trade used to come from Kolkata. So that's how the it used to happen, looted. So the Narad military solution. I'm so sorry today. I'm not able to show you because I prepared all these things, and I do not know how to share on Chrome. Maybe in the next in the next week's presentation, I'm going to do the first thing is present this book. today you can at least hear if you are there with me so narad muni talks about ensuring universal trust okay he talks about moral of the armed forces must be kept high by giving them salaries on time he says test the loyalty of your own cabinet committee or the close team which you work with he talks about removing whimsical military officers that like people who do not understand dharma 
and just behave like Sun Tzu, just to win the battle. Like those are whimsical people. They're not thinking people. So you cannot have such warlords maintaining your army. You know, that's where. So I feel the Sun Tzu, somehow the Mahabharata text must have reached China because they took everything. China also took Mahabharata, Ramayana, everything they took. That's why in Lhasa, Gati Kaloeshwar, Gati Kaloeshwar is a Buddhist name for Krishna in, in the Buddhist philosophy. And Confucianism, Confucianism has used all the old texts and rebranded them as their own. And, and they call it a Confucius philosophy. And the China is literally sponsoring them all over the world in every single university to talk about Confucianism. But I feel that the same thing Indian government should also do, like books like mine, which are very specific parts of Mahabharat, the making of a statesman in modern contest, like ensuring timely salaries. He doesn't talk about that. He doesn't talk about testing for loyalty. He says, just kill them. If you find them un un unloyal, kill them, Sun Tzu says. Narad Muni doesn't say that. Narad Muni says, test them for loyalty. So there is again a dharma involved. Dharma also means law. So, so there is a test for dharma involved, whether the, that person is really uh, is uh, not loyal or is just a propaganda by the enemies. Nothing like that. Now, and then award for individual initiatives. Here, Sanzu never talk about that. Sanzu never talks about awards. Sanzu says that the, the pe people should be taken away or everything should be taken away so they're dependent on you so 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 it is not again a positive statement narad muni says that they must be awarded wise citizens must be awarded good military officers must be rewarded and the military families must be protected sanzu doesn't talk about that if you look at the sanzus i've shared you and i can read of more actually sanzu says that if the family member, one family member disloyal, kill the entire family. That's what he says. Very exploitative. So Sun Tzu's, you know, it's a negative philosophy. Like Sun Tzu's art of war is not relevant today. It is good for the terrorists maybe, but not good for the dharmic states. And, and Narad Muni definitely doesn't talk about that. And Narad Muni, Sun Tzu says the fallen enemies must be sheltered. Oh, sorry, must be killed. Like if somebody is surrendered, they must be killed immediately. Now, Narad Muni says, the fallen enemies must be sheltered if they have given up enmity. They have accepted your superintendence. They are willing to abide by your, by your discipline. Then they must be sheltered. Otherwise not. See, most of the Indian kings, like, uh, and uh, they are great heroes, no doubt about it. Uh, Prithira Chauhan, and Maharaj, Maharaj, they are great people. I mean, I have no words for it. But they made the mistake of forgiving the Islamic invaders. And, and Narad Muni doesn't say that. He says, don't you test them. If they keep attacking them once or twice, then you kill them, finish them off. Because if you keep the problems longing for a long time, then problems are going to overcome you. Like in the case of we are doing the same mistake. Which we did, which we did for um, uh, Gori and Ghaznavi, and uh, because they kept attacking Somnath and keep forgiving them, Pakistan is doing the same thing and we keep forgiving it. So we do the same as if you are not learning from Narad Muni, you have not learned from Narad Muni. So, so Narad Muni says, you forgive them once or twice, but the intentions remain. You have to finish them off, completely remove it, because then he says that if in future, they, like Narad Muni says, is like the question is, Narad Muni's question is to Yudhishthir, whether you kill your enemies in battle without considering their harvest time and drought if case be. So the, the, the point which is trying to make is that sometimes we have to uh, make tougher decisions. Like the, we have to check on why the... Uh, uh, we have to make a decision on why, at what situation we need to we need to defeat the enemy completely. Now, in the Sanzu never talks about that. Sanzu says any enemy must be killed, must be removed by hook or crook. Narmun doesn't say that. Narmun says protecting the families of your own military families also. And I don't know how much we follow Narmun today. 
because it's a, it's an unfortunate thing. We discuss more Sun Tzu's out of war than Narad Muni's making of his statesman, because we we always feel that uh, that Sun Tzu is a. In fact, this book, many many scholars, including Dr. Subramanian Swami, independently, I never ask anyone to praise my book, anyone, but this was independently praised by many people independently, because we are bringing the right context into our politics. Because you cannot play politics without uh, uh, without being military powerful. So Narumani says that you need to maintain a very powerful army, big army, large army. Because Sanatan Dharma is protected by such large armies. And unfortunately, fortunately, we are doing it today. But we still have not learned the strategic message. They know that uh, when the enemy is hell-bent on destroying you, when they are weak, you need to finish them off. This is the question exactly Narad Muni says. Not like Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is saying just destroy them. If they are opposing you, start killing them. So, so Sun Tzu is, is, is similar to Kanik instructions to Dhritarashtra. Kanik also spoke to Dhritarashtra like this, exactly like Sun Tzu. And Dhritarashtra rejected it in the end. He rejected it. You know, so, so I think Sun Tzu's art of war looks very similar to Kanik's destruction, instructions to Dhritarashtra. Like hook or crook, just victory, one fight for victory. Sometimes, and I must admit it, that uh, the strategic defeat is also a victory for the people. You know, So in Mahabharat, people chose a defeat also sometimes. Like, uh, for example, so much humiliation. Yudhishthir was very powerful. Krishna was always on his side. And Krishna Bhagwan himself was powerful enough to kill the entire Kaurava army. But he that was strategic defeat. He was willing to accept just five villages. That is strategic defeat. So a, a Raja can choose a defeat also. That will be also considered victory for the greater good of people. Sun Tzu doesn't talk like that. Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu says, and 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 Yudhishthir had Maharaj had a around 88,000 advisors advising him, 88,000, snatak. Snatak, nowadays you call it graduate, but that doesn't mean that is. Snatak means a mature person in Vedic understanding or Sanatan understanding. That is called Snatak. No? Sanatan, Sanatak. So same word. Snatak is, nowadays we use just for graduation. But Sanatak is a very mature person. So again, that is not there. There is no quality of life mentioned in Sun Tzu's Art of War. I, I read it the whole PDF. Like here, Narad Muni tells in Sun Tzu's Art of War to, uh, to like morning sadhana, afternoon sadhana, evening sadhana, accurate financial reporting. There is no such mention over there. It's just war, 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 and all kinds of ways to win the war. But that doesn't win the war. Because nowadays, see, World times may have changed, like from Treta Yuga to Dwapar Yuga to Kali Yuga, but the principles have not changed. Principles are still the same. Yeah, you know, you need Artha, you need Dharma, you need Kama, all three you need, and you need Moksha also. You need all the four Purusharth you need. Principles, the, the times have changed, the lifetimes have reduced, the ability to grasp these messages have reduced, but the motives have not changed. Motives are still the same. You know, so so the people say the times have changed. How is it possible? No, we can. That is called Smriti. We can use those principles to apply in today's life, and then continue with the same. The basic goals have not changed. Goals have always remained the same. That we have to get out of this cycle of birth, old age, disease, and that that has not changed till date. And then also maintaining granaries, grain seed banks for farmers. Can you imagine? In Dwapar Yuga, this is a this is a story of Dwapar Yuga. Towards the end, in the cusp of Dwapar and, and Kali Yuga, Narada is asking that do you maintain large granaries and large grain seed banks? Uh, Narada is asking, where if you if you look at the let me share the screen of the Sun Tzu's Art of War, you will be shocked to see what he is talking about. He has no interest in. I knew either he thinks that maybe people are just going to manage somehow to eat. You know, that's a valid assumption, but it doesn't work. 
So, so like he's it's all about the war. Like the for example, the skillful soldier does not raise second levy, neither is ugly weapons loaded more than twice. Very common understanding. Very common understanding. Like, don't you think that the people who are fighting the big wars will be aware of this? So, so if, if I was reading it, the whole Sun Tzu's out of war, and I could not learn anything. I could just learn that okay, hook or crook, just kill. You know, uh, like you look at that. Let your great object be victory, not lengthy campaigns. You know, people people will be very amazed. Oh, war! What a wonderful statement. Common sense. War is a very expensive exercise, and and that's why I reject Sun Tzu's Art of War as an incomplete book. Where in Western, uh, you know, Western universities, which are funded by China, have glorified it too much. But it is not. It's like beyond. Uh, I don't think so. It is worth needing so much glorification. In fact, the Narad's instructions to Yudhishthir on how to run the kingdom, which I put in my book, the making of a statesman. He's he's creating a warlord. Statesmen are much bigger. They are the rulers of the planet. Warlords are just for the one week or one district or one uh, somebody like in small scale. Now all these calculations he has given which is based on the Chinese numbers in that time over there. But if you look at Mahabharat, Narad Muni's instructions to Yudhishthir, those instructions are based for timeless instructions. Like anybody can use today also. You know? Like uh, the highest form of generalship is to bog the enemy's plans. Again, at tactical level, this will be given to a, a third rank or fourth rank military general under Yudhish Arjun. Like a very low level military planners will be given this information because their job is only to perform the task. Not the, it can, you cannot make by these instructions, you cannot make a king, a statesman. Raja, you cannot make a statesman, cannot be made by these instructions. You know, so countering to that is Narad Muni says that uh, talking about protection of women, what happened to women? Like, Sun Tzu is completely ignoring. He's a fictional character, actually. Sun Tzu is not. He's ignoring women completely, as if women don't exist. And Narad Muni is telling Yudhishthir that women are the mothers. You need to protect them, and it, they should be kept away from conflict. Many many angles I can reject Sun Tzu's out of war because it is doesn't add up. It's just like taking control, looting them, destroying them, and moving on. This is now not how the states are run, whether in modern times or in previous times. Wars don't create life. Wars have a purpose. Like, for example, like a really enemy state is there, destroying people. That's the Sanatana Dharma tells us to wage wars, to initiate wars, also, it says. But for the sake of Dharma, so that those people can become peaceful. Like if you if you have seen many of my videos or my read my book, Pandavas, the famous five, you'll see. So when the Arjun is going north, so there is a purpose for it. He's going north and many places are surrendering to him because he was carrying a huge army. And many places are, many places yet to fight. Like when he entered Uttar Kuru, Uttar Kuru is north of Kyrgyzstan. He entered Uttar Kuru, he had to actually fight with the full force of his military powers, powers he got. And then he did it. He did it again. He did it twice. One for Ratsu Yagya. And, uh, and second for after the Mahabharat war ended, then again he did it. Twice he did it. So the the point is military force has to be used, definitely. And therefore, Narad Muni says the state must maintain huge military force which can overwhelm any other person. And Narad Muni also talks about spycraft. He said the enemy, every single enemy official must be spied on. He says it. Sun Tzu also says it. And so he has picked up some specific elements. But Sun Tzu has, has definitely picked up Kanik's instructions of Dhritarashtra. See, because Mahabharata is written before. And India did not have the tradition of copyright even till date. Even today, we don't have a copyright tradition. If, we, if India puts a copyright on Vedas, then I'm telling you the most of the Western campuses and everything else will collapse. Because everything will be sourced back to Veda. You know, Indian government should try that. If they put sanctions... And start putting start putting royalties on yoga and Veda. Most of the American universities will collapse. Even the biggest companies like Accenture and all these people will also collapse because they 
rely on ancient consulting. They're, they're consulting. They're doing the work of consulting. You know, Try that if India wants to put sanctions on anyone. But anyway, now Narad Muni talks about, now he, there is no mention of doctors here. And 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 the I'm just surprised at the mediocrity of the Western academics, such mediocre analysis that for them, this is the God book of war and they quote everywhere. And the Narad Muni's book is all about, like Narad Muni is talking about patiently addressing, addressing grievances. If somebody is sad, somebody has problem in their family, a Raja, a statesman must hear them personally, attend to them. He says it. You know, and uh, and 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 Sanzu says, okay, now like here the very famous if ruler, our force are 10 to enemies, one surrounding, if five to one to attack him. Very common, like you don't need a rocket science to write all these things. Is no wisdom, no dharma, nothing. Now, here the I I will uh, you know I would like to quote something else here which I read it actually. Uh, like he here now he will win who knows when to fight and what and when not to fight. I mean, do you think this is a great instruction? Narad Muni says. The war must only be levied when all other options have exhausted and it should be levied when the enemy is weak. Okay, Narad Muni says that. Not when the enemy is strong. Raja should not, statesman should not give a chance for enemy to become stronger before the war is held. Narad Muni says that. You know? And, and Narayan talks about removing corruption, removing, gaining loyalty of people. Bhupal, Bhupal means just like we have district. So there is a Raja, Lokapal, there is a Bhupal, small landlords, Bhupal. So by convincing them, by philosophically convincing them, your purpose, you know, and, and, uh, and Narad Muni says, teachers have to be secured. Teachers have to be used for teaching people. And Narad Muni says, never create anger and sadness in your population. They are governing citizens. And, and, and Sanzu says, always create differences in your citizens. It's a Machiavellian work. Just like the Italians, the Italian popes and, and uh, all these people have always done, divided people. That's why today, if you go to Italy, Rome, Vatican is not a light figure by the locals. You know, we, others are very impressed, but the Italians... They, are, they want to keep them, take them out of the country. It's many of them, majority of them. Anyway, that's a different matter. But my point is very simple. Unnecessary glorification of Sun Tzu's art of war. And Mahabharat has much more. My book is there countering Sun Tzu's art of war, which is, which is very much needed today. Unnecessary glorification, unnecessary uh, showing up, the, in front of Mahabharat, all these literatures by the modern things, everything pales in front of significance, in terms of value to anybody. You know, I'll take some questions now. And uh, it's 12 minutes. I've got this thing. Um, so I want to thank Gurdeep Singh. Uh, thank you, Gurdeep Ji, and for becoming a new member. For Pawan, yes, Instagram channel is open, working. Uh, uh, Pawan Sani's question is, the original people, Maya Sabita, the word Maya, Sanskrit word is this thing. Absolutely. Uh, it is a well-known fact that, uh, and gradually people are more discovering it also, that people from South India, including Simhala Desh, Simhala Desh was a part of India, divided by the British into a new countries, Sri Lanka with the name Sri Lanka was put in 1972. Before that, it was called Simala or Ceylon by the British. Okay. So they have visited from there and Malaya Desh. Malaya Desh means Malaysia, Indonesia, those kind of islands. So South America has been populated by those people uh, from Papua New Guinea 
Mahabharata times Ramayana also mentions that very clearly, and uh, and also the migration due to Parshuram from Alaska, Bering Strait. Bering Strait was not there during that time. A Bering Strait, uh, like a somebody, who, if you analyze it, data available on Google, the thousand years before. Bering Strait and uh, the the Asia and the USA, the North US North America was connected land, so people moved from there to south, also. So there's a collection of cultures. The people moved by boats also to South America and also came by from the north. Is a well-known fact. Rudraji, uh, art of work, a counterpart, is already written. I have the making of a statesman, which is shown on the screen here. We must discontinue out of war completely. It's a completely exploitative word. Book. And I'll talk about Old Testament also in future sometimes. That our Old Testament is a very exploitative book. And that is not coming from me. I'm going to bring a good scholar on that. Mata Sita ka dharti me samanata unka vanvas. माता सीता धरती से ही आई थी तो धरती में चली गई इसमें किसमें इतना बड़ा बात क्या करें धरती से आई थी ना नाम सीता ही है कि जब आप क्यारी बनाते हैं तो उसको सीता बोलते हैं हिंदी में सो यू ऑल कैन एनी ऑफ यू कैन क्वेश्चन चाइना ऑफ सेंचुरी रूल बाय फॉरेनर्स नॉट जस्ट बाय वेस्टर्नर्स दैट इज ट्रू दैट इज ट्रू आई डोंट नो व्हाट इज योर क्वेश्चन uh sanzu is a very tactile short term film and it is bad so it's so long to do absolutely right varun thank you from new jersey new, new zealand i believe and see are you from new zealand you can come in later on even arthashastra with the instruction of dharma and principle to avoid anarchy and division that's right that's right uh uh solution for hindu genocide in india sir uh good question so my book narad the making of a statesman gives solutions that and also bhagavad gita also gives solutions that arajakta anarchy anarchy is the is the is the dream of a rakshas a rakshas i always create anarchy ravana was an anarchist also you can understand him as an anarchist so ram created order by killing ravan so the tough decisions have to be made so unless people have knowledge about dharma they cannot make tough decisions uh in indian government will never promote geeta they will not come out uh, okay i will uh सर आपने कहा उत्तर कुरुक्षेत्र में बीजेपी के अनुसार क्या कि इस समय लोग बीजेपी में आते हैं ये क्वेश्चन बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग है बीजेपी पर के अनुसार देखिए अर्जुन जब उत्तर कुरु पहुंचा अर्जुन वाज वेरी सरप्राइज पीपल वर वेरी गुड लुकिंग एज कंपेयर टू व्हाट ही सीन एवरीवेयर एल्स दैट इज नॉर्मल अगर आप देखेंगे मेरू पर्वत भी वहीं पर है सुमेरु नहीं है सुमेरु इज ए इज ए कॉस्मोलॉजिकल प्लेटफॉर्म बट मेरु पर्वत पृथ्वी पे है यू राइट एंड देन हमारी प्रॉब्लम ये है कि हम जो जो नहीं दिखता है उसे मानते हैं जो मानते नहीं है या कुछ लोग सप्त द्वीपों को सात कॉन्टिनेंट मानते हैं पर क्या है दूध लिसन द सेवन कॉन्टिनेंट क्षीर क्षीर सागर और दी क्षीर सागर इज द मिल्क ओशन जूस ओशन ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर मेंशन दैट इज इन द पुराणिक इन द इन द पुराणिक वे ओके but in bhagavat purana but satadweep is considered real as a islands seven main islands 13 secondary islands these are the this is the information in mahabharat so geographically in 
so every single loka as far as the 14 planetary systems are there loka is has a corresponding name on earth like for example if you are delhi new delhi new city was new delhi england in uk uh, is new england in us is a state name doesn't mean new england is england but new england and it's, so all the colonies or the, all the places which are populated are made after the original place and that's how the names are given so seven islands on prithvi are named after the original islands in the world over there. Ek aur interesting question hai. Uh, proficiency in archery and horsemanship as most tribes were ferocious archers. see all these tribes and all those things are not good they were all proper kingdoms proper civilization the word tribe that the people are not civilized this is a European context, context, European concept. So Vedic culture was prevalent all over the world, including just 500 years before, uh, like 2,900 years back, Syria was speaking Sanskrit. Lithuania, Latvia, Latin, most of them are Sanskrit words, even today. And everyone has agreed unanimously that Sanskrit was the language. If Sanskrit was the language, the home of Sanskrit is India. Again, Arvind invasion theory is debunked because the language, some source has to be there. Sanskrit, everybody knows it is the origin is the is the Kashi, Varanasi, Ayodhya. Ayodhya, the Sanskrit was spoken in Ramayana time also, Trita Yuga. So Devanagari is prevalent before. Again, they come up with a new logic. The Brahmi came first, Devanagari came later. No, Devanagari was written even that time also. So it's, it's all conjectures. These are conjectures not proved but natural like there's sometimes we have to use just a logic you know what the, if the what a large jar of water is kept on a roof it's naturally going to flow down it's not going to go up it will not happen that the water from a lower jar will go to the upper jar it's not going to happen the flow of gravity will be the jar on the upper will water will flow down from there some lo basic logic so if the Sanskrit was the universal language, India is the home of Sanskrit. So that means everybody came from India or were influenced by India. Very natural. Like unless an Englishman come, did not come to India, how will India learn English? Somebody taught him, right? Same way Sanskrit happened. Like people from India went and taught Sanskrit. So archery, all the basic defending, like... Uh, the, according to Veda, Bhagavad Puran, life came on all planets, all parts of the earth simultaneously. You know, I'll give an example. Apple grows in India. Apple goes, grows in, name is different, but everybody knows it's an apple by taste and smell. Apple grows in US. Apple grows in South America. Apple grows in, grows everywhere. Rice, different kinds of rice grows everywhere naturally. Then the same thing with humans. The whole evolution theory is all, it's all mental conjectures, but I've, but on the strength of the Veda, we can say that. Uh, then, manifest in magic, Sir Raman, Chabi, Sudar Yogi, So I don't work on dates anywhere. If for dates, you can ask Nile Shok and other scholars on dates. But I can tell you 24,000 shloka have been written in Ramayana. And it has happened in Treta Yuga. It has happened in 24th Treta Yuga, according to Bhagavad Purana. And many Acharyas have said the same thing. So I'll just repeat that over there. So I think we are way past the, we are just approaching the one hour limit. And I thank all of you for joining and listening and patiently staying with me. And I know there are many questions you have. And, uh, and if you want to read more what I speak or what I say, please read my books. And in the books, I have covered everything in much more detail. My latest book on Pandavas, many of the questions you have on Pandavas, read them. If you're in Australia or any other place, you can definitely get it from... Uh, your Amazon is available in India, kapot.in. 
So this is my latest book, Pandavas the Famous Five. It is much more detailed and all the questions on Mahabharat will be probably answered over there. If not, I'll cover that in one of the shows later on. No? Thank you so much for everyone and I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you.